uh, it can only be produced when there is a blazing sun. A woman, okay, who is a salt pan worker, will be lifting somewhere between five and seven tons of salt. Hello, my name is Aparna Karthikeyan. I'm an independent journalist. I write for People's Archive of Rural India, where I'm a senior fellow. My work has been funded by the Azim Premzi University Research Grant. My series is called Let the Meat Rise. The first of them that I looked at was salt, and I'll be talking to you about that today. Uh, for this story, I traveled to Chutikoran, um, Tutukudi district in Tamil Nadu. Um, we went in September 2021. Um, it was quite hot as it always is in Tutukuri. And the thing is, with salt, the most staple of all kitchen items, uh, it can only be produced when there is a blazing sun. The salt workers want that sun. What affects them most is climate change. The thing which has now become a buzzword, which has now become like, you know, something that we talk about in the living room, where it affects us in some ways in urban areas, when our, you know, car park gets flooded or when the, you know, uh, there's some water in the living room. For them, each spell of rain means a 10-day drop from work, 10 days. And they have work only for six months in a year. What does this work actually entail? Much of the work is done by uh, people who are marginalized in many ways. Uh, among them, it's caste and gender. That's why they do the work that they do, which is extremely laborious. What do, what do I mean by extremely laborious? I'm not exaggerating when I say that. Um, each day, a woman, okay, who is a salt pan worker, will be lifting somewhere between five and seven tons of salt, which is basically, uh, they carry 35 kilograms on their head, or a chatti, they call it a chatti, they carry it on their heads, from where the salt is made, you know, in those uh, pits, you must have seen that they make for great photographs, okay, under a blue sky, this uh, place, you know, with salt, uh, which is there on the barap, the edges of the pans, and then, you know, heaped into an ambaram, which is basically the heap. Hmm? It makes for a great photograph. But can you imagine the lives of these women, right? They get up in the morning, they go long before the sun is up because it is blinding. Snow and salt can be blinding when there is a sun. They wear no goggles, they wear no protective gear, and they're carrying this 35 kilograms of salt about 150 to 200 trips, okay, over um, um, like about, say, about 200 uh, uh, feet, you know, from where the salt is made to where they have to pour the salt. They keep doing this up, down, up, down. Some of them wear, you know, these rubber um, boots, but they say it's very uncomfortable. They don't wear gloves. They don't wear goggles because what they are provided with by the company owners, many of them are private company owners who have laced the salt pans from the government, they, the private company owners give them very cheap goggles or they give them money to buy the goggles. Now imagine you have a world where there is no salt, right? Uh, because with these people's labor comes that salt. Um, the answer to everything that we suggest, you know, where there is a lot of, what shall I say, um, oppression in, 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 uh, in production, whether it is food or whether it is anything else, the answer is always like, let's mechanize this. Hmm? That solution is a very simple solution that we offer from, you know, again, from the comforts of our living room. Why does this not work? Just in Tutukudi district now, there are tens of thousands of workers who are working in the salt pan industry. So tomorrow, suppose we say we, you know, make all of this into one giant salt pan because that's the only way mechanization is possible. If you have hundreds of acres, suppose you make all of that and then you put in machines to harvest the salt. What happens to these people? The solution for anything has to be a compassionate one, both for the people and for the, you know, the consumer, right? It has to be a compassionate solution and also for the earth and the environment. So the solution is not about getting them all out of the work, but to see how we can make the workplace a better one. Uh, what are the things that they face in the workplace? These are all women who are as old as me. Very young women don't typically get into this work, play, uh, work now because they do have aspirations as they should and they are educated in Tamil Nadu, so they go to other work. The women who are now in this are in their 40s, in their 50s, and their health has been battered by the work that they have done, right? They showed me, you know, their hands and how badly they have calluses. They, they said, feel my hand, you know, it is like a man's hand. It is so rough, okay? They, they showed me their toes. 
uh, and their nails you know and all of them had such black and toenails it had fungal infections their feet had so many open sores and it does not heal because that's the nature of the work right because they are in a brine solution which is very close to becoming salt we can't take 5 minutes of that you know our hands in that right and they work in that day in and day out and also the weight you know when they push the salt it's not just carry it over their head you know they push and drag the salt behind them and that's about 10 kilograms of heavy salt that they have to pull with a wooden paddle and none of their workplaces has a toilet they don't have access to drinking water they have to go that early in the morning and what do they do with the children they have to get like you know a neighbor or somebody to sit in with their children not only is this a problem for the women it is a problem for the families it also puts a lot of financial pressure on the family because they like i said you know they get paid once a week a small amount of money and that money will not be paid to them if they take a single days holiday that holiday could be because they fall sick because of the nature of the work absolutely no social security i suppose you know if we just translate this work these working conditions to another industry let's say uh, to the it industry for example how many people would you know apply for those jobs right i think that's a question we'll have to take and we can't have a single thing happening without salt not just in the domestic i'm not just talking about like you know a sambar or a samosa or any of those things there are industrial uses for salt as all of you obviously will know but 15000 uses for salt in india is the third largest manufacturers we have some very hard questions to ask ourselves about you know th- these people who are producing very vital things that we are using in our kitchens today we've just started with salt as we go along we look at the other stories in the series some of the reporting that i have completed and some of the stories that i've written uh, please do give the story a read the link is at the bottom of the video thank you